Could Microsoft be extending support for Windows 10 past the 2025 end of life? It turns out kind of, but there's a catch. Stay tuned. So we've known for quite some time that Windows 10 was going to be losing support in 2025. October 14th, 2025 to be exact. And we also got some bad news last year that Windows 10 would no longer be receiving any more feature updates after 22H2. That's why it's 2024 and we never got a 23H2 update. However, just a few days ago, at least as of the recording of this video, Microsoft announced that it's reopening the beta channel for Windows 10 because they plan to release some new feature updates. We also got some really good news in regards to extended support for Windows 10. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. But first, I got to pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So I said a while back in another video that I haven't been doing videos on Windows 10 lately because it doesn't really make sense to do videos on a dying operating system. However, this new news made me install Windows 10 right here on my test system for this video. Now, that's because a few weeks ago we talked about Windows 10 was actually gaining market share on Windows 11. That's reversed a little bit since that video, but Windows 10 is currently holding 68% market share, while Windows 11 is sitting at around 27% market share. But you know what? That's still a majority market share for Windows 10. And with Windows 10 reaching end of life in just a little over a year, that's going to create some problems for Windows users next year. That's also got to be causing Microsoft to kind of freak out a little bit because if Windows 10 reaches end of life while still being the dominant version of Windows, it could cause some problems for Microsoft or at least at minimum be kind of embarrassing. So, with the news that they plan to release some feature updates for Windows 10, it's just kind of bizarre. Because right now, Microsoft wants more than anything else for people to transition to Windows 11. And releasing new feature updates for Windows 10 seems to kind of contradict that desire. But you know what? It's a possibility that Microsoft might just be owning it. They know Windows 10 is a popular operating system. And they know people want to continue using it. But to what end? If Windows 10 is still reaching end of life next year, then how is Microsoft really owning it by giving us a few new features just to kill Windows 10 in the same time frame that they had planned on killing it from the beginning? Well, that's where the other news comes in. You see, Microsoft is doing a couple things that are extremely unprecedented. Not only releasing feature updates with end of support looming, but for the first time that I can remember, they're going to be offering Windows ESU to everyone. Windows ESU is a service that Microsoft has had for quite some time. They offered it with Windows XP and Windows 7, and everybody just assumed that they were going to offer it for Windows 10 as well. ESU is an acronym that stands for Extended Security Update. This is a paid service by Microsoft that essentially continues to provide security updates for up to three years for a version of Windows after it reaches end of life. However, the downside to the service is that it's only ever been offered to volume license customers. It was essentially intended for big businesses that could not upgrade their version of Windows at the time that it reached end of life. So they would allow these businesses to continue to receive security updates for up to three years if they were willing to pay for it. But now, in a completely unprecedented move, Microsoft is going to be offering the same service to everyone. Now, we don't know what the prices are going to be yet, and Microsoft says they will announce that when Windows 10 gets closer to its end of life next year. However, the prices of ESU in the past have been $61 for the first year, and then it would double every year after that up to three years with the third year costing $244. 
they very well may offer a discount rate for home users because those prices that I just mentioned were for volume license customers. Those prices are also every single system. So if you have more than one system running Windows 10, you'll have to pay for each license. Ultimately though, I'm not gonna slam Microsoft for this because I honestly think it's a great compromise. There are many people that either don't wanna to upgrade to Windows 11 or simply can't upgrade to Windows 11. And we've been complaining about this for a couple of years now. And it sounds like Microsoft has at least kind of listened. By opening ESU up to home users at hopefully a discounted price, it will be cheaper to continue to use Windows 10 than have to buy a new computer to run Windows 11. Ultimately though, I think it's a win-win for not only Microsoft, who kind of wants to ditch Windows 10 because of the cost of continuing to support it, but also to the customers who want to continue to use it. And you know, honestly, if you really think about it, people just pirated ESU updates for Windows XP and Windows 7 anyway. So this way Microsoft is just giving people what they were going to pirate anyway, and hopefully help to fund the continued support of Windows 10 into the future, at least three years into the future. With that said though, ESU is only for security updates. This doesn't include feature updates or even Microsoft support. This is just for security updates and that's it. But you know what, if you think about it, that's all we really want anyway. However, with Microsoft opening up the beta channel for Windows 10 to give us new features for Windows 10, this might be kind of future-proofing the operating system for a few more years that it will be covered by ESU. Now you can either wait for these updates to come out, or if you're like me and you're a little curious, you can always get them early by enabling Windows Insider program on your Windows 10 system. Now, typically this requires you to have a Microsoft account, and you all know that I absolutely hate Microsoft accounts. So let me show you how to enable the Insider program on Windows 10 without a Microsoft account. Let's jump on the system and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so here we are on Windows 10, and typically, if you wanna get into the Insider program, it's actually fairly easy. You click on the Start button, you go into Settings, you go into Update and Security, and then you go right down here to where it says the Windows Insider program. And then from here, obviously, you have to turn on Diagnostic and Feedback in order to be in the Insider program. And that kind of makes sense, because the whole point in Microsoft letting you beta test Windows is because they wanna, they wanna be able to fix bugs, so they need to have the Diagnostic and Feedback turned on. You have to turn on the optional Diagnostic data in order to qualify for the Insider program. And then once you turn that on, you can just hit the Back button to go back to the Windows Insider program. And then from here, all you gotta do is push the button that says Get started. However, unfortunately, you got to link a stupid account. And obviously, I don't want to do that. So to get around that, there's a cool little script that you can use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close this here. And we're going to op open up Chrome and go right here to GitHub. And this is called the Offline Insider Enroll script. And all it is is a simple little CMD script that will edit the registry to enable the Insider program. And to get it, you can go right here, click on Latest. And the latest is actually from 2003, so hasn't been updated in a while, but it still works really well. So we're going to go ahead and get that, open up into our Downloads folder. We're going to go ahead and extract it right here. And then once it's extracted, we can go ahead and minimize some of these things that we have open here. And then all we have to do is just run this script right here. And you go ahead and right click on it. Make sure you run it as administrator. And if you're concerned about it, you can always go through and you can look at the script to see what it does. And essentially all it does is enable certain registry keys in order to turn on the Insider program. And you can always go through here and look through it and see what it does if you want. But for the most part, I've tested it out and it seems to work pretty well. It doesn't have any malicious intent to it. So all you have to do is right click on this, hit run as administrator, hit yes to your user account control and you get this right here. Now, this part is really important. You don't wanna enable the Canary channel or the development channel. If you do, your computer is gonna automatically upgrade to Windows 11. You wanna make sure that you enable just the beta channel, that's it. So go ahead and hit two for your choice and hit enter and it'll go ahead and apply the changes and it'll ask you if you wanna reboot your computer. So as soon as I hit yes, it'll reboot the computer and I will meet you right back here in Windows.
Okay, we're back in Windows from our restart. We're gonna go ahead and click Start, go into Settings, go back to Update and Security. And as you'll see, it says some settings are managed by our organization. And of course, it's because we ran that script. But if we click into Windows Insider Program, as you can see, we are now enabled and we're subscribed to the beta channel. And this should just download beta copies of the Windows 10 beta. It shouldn't upgrade you to Windows 11. And then all you got to do is just go ahead and hit check for updates. And as far as I know, there's no updates available yet. And yeah, nothing came out here. But at some point, updates will start to roll out for Windows 10. Now, if at any time you decide you don't want to be subscribed to the beta channel anymore, or you want to just completely disable the insider program from within Windows Update. It's super simple. All you gotta do is go ahead and we'll close settings here. We're gonna go back to our downloads folder and open up this offline insider enroll right here. We're gonna right click on it, run it as administrator, hit yes to the user account control. And as you can see, number four right here is stop receiving Windows Insider builds. All you gotta do is go ahead and hit number four, hit enter and then it will undo all the changes that we just did and then it wants you to hit yes to restart the computer real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes and restart real fast and I'll meet you back in Windows. Okay, so we're back in Windows after our second restart. So if we click on our start button, we go ahead and click on settings. We're gonna to go to updates and security and then we're gonna go down to Windows Insider and as you can see, we're back to where we started out before that our diagnostic and feedback needs to be turned on. So this essentially puts the system back into the same condition that it was in before you ran the script. So as of the filming of this video, there are no updates in the Windows 10 beta channel as of yet. So hopefully they're coming soon. And with that said, I have no idea what these feature updates are going to be, but I'm really hoping for TAR and 7-zip integration. But if anyone at Microsoft is watching this video, please let there be TAR and 7-zip integration on that list. But ultimately, a lot of you may not want to pay for security updates for Windows 10. And I totally get that. But I also understand why Microsoft is doing it. I mean, you would seriously be amazed if you knew how much money it cost per year to support a Windows operating system. I did the math a while back and based on the average size of a development team at Microsoft and the average pay that a person in the development team would make, Microsoft is paying several million dollars a year to provide security updates for Windows 10. And that's if only one development team is working on it. So, asking users who want to continue to use Windows 10 after the end of life to kick in a little bit, I think is reasonable. In fact, if this works out, maybe we'll see Windows 10 last longer than three years in ESU. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see what happens. But if there's absolutely no way that you're going to pay for security updates when Windows 10 reaches end of life, then the alternative is you can always upgrade to Windows 11 and continue to receive free updates. And I'm also sure there will be other options as well, but I can't talk about them on here because of the risk that I might get a strike for software piracy on YouTube. But I'm sure you guys are smart enough to figure that one out. But for those who decide to just bite the bullet and upgrade to Windows 11, then you can always make it look like Windows 10. In fact, I did a video right here. It's possible to make Windows 11 almost indistinguishable from Windows 10. That's an older video, but the tools should still work in the latest builds of Windows 11. If they don't, let me know in the comments of that video and maybe I'll remake it. As always, you guys have a great day.